Well, hi everyone. I am Reverend Ann Tabor and welcome to the sixth episode of Put a Myrtle on It. The place to be for a little myrtle, a little prayer, and a little song. Uh, and uh, that song, uh, of course, was from Karen Drucker, uh, We Are All Angels. And uh, if you've been with us at Unity of Arlington, you know our wonderful choir director, Diane Pierce, uh, created an amazing arrangement of that. And if you know me at all, you know it's one of my favorites. It sure enough is. Mm -hmm. So, welcome today to Put a Myrtle on It. Uh, welcome Becky and April. I'm glad to hear your dad is doing better. And welcome uh, Anne, Anne Rice. Yes, we certainly are holding everyone on the West Coast in our hearts and in our prayers today. And so before uh, actually I move forward, I also want to acknowledge that today, of course, is September 11th. Um, and this is a day of remembrance for us in honor of this day, uh, the day that passenger jets hijacked by terrorists changed America's history. And so we hold all of those who lost their lives uh, that day and for those who uh, were affected and continue to be uh, affected by that uh, tragic event. So I want to make sure to acknowledge that. Okay, uh, moving forward. Now, if you are new to Unity and you're not all that familiar with who Myrtle Fillmore is, uh, I'd like to just take a, a minute to give you some highlights. Now, Myrtle uh, was a co-founder of the Unity Movement. She and her husband, Charles Fillmore, co-founded uh, this movement back in the late 1800s. Um, which eventually became Silent Unity, which is an international prayer ministry, uh, well over 125 years old. I think actually this year it's 130. Um, and Daily Word magazine, uh, which if you don't have Daily Word, uh, you know, you can always go to dailyword.com and uh, subscribe there. And I do encourage you to call Silent Unity if you have not ever had that experience. It's just so lovely uh, to have a, a telephone prayer chaplain to pray with you. So don't be shy. Um, so now I am a Unity minister, licensed, ordained. I have a Master of Divinity. And one of the reasons that I became a Unity minister is because I fell in love I fell in love with Myrtle Fillmore. I did. <laughs> uh, her teachings, uh, Unity's spiritual principles changed my life for the better. And I know that they can do the same for you. So when I was in seminary, I coined the phrase, put a Myrtle on it. And uh, since we are in the midst of this global pandemic uh, together, I like to say we are growing through this time together. We are growing. We will be on the other side of this. Uh, yes, we will. Um, but what better time to share some of the seeds of truth that Myrtle shared with, her, with us in her wonderful Myrtle Wisdom and so every Friday, uh, until otherwise notified, we are going to gather here 12 noon central time and we're going to put a myrtle on it. Oh yes, we are. Now, I do want to advise you though, um, especially again, if you're new to unity or you new to, to new thought, putting a myrtle on it is not like some kind of magical thinking. No, this is spiritual work. I know that's not a word that we like to think of, but it is a journey and it is a practice. This is a spiritual practice. So, you know, there's no magical wands or pink frosting or show ponies, right? I mean, this is about your own spiritual awakening, your own evolution, your own spiritual maturity, which, you know, is a revolution. It's a spiritual revolution. So welcome to your spiritual revolution. 
<laughs> now, um, today I am going to be sharing from uh, Myrtle Fillmore's book, Healing Letters, and this is a collection of works of Myrtle's. I also shared from this last week, and um, I also share from uh, one of her other published books, How to Let God Help You. But today, it is all about healing letters. And in honor of Unity's World Day of Prayer, which took place on uh, Wednesday and Thursday of this week, um, I want to continue uh, with the theme of prayer. Last week I shared from her chapter on prayer. And this week I'm going to share from her chapter called Going Into the Silence. Going Into the Silence. And um, I'm going to share a couple of different uh, excerpts. And so if you have this book, you know, please join me. I'm going to start on page... 28. I'm going to start on page 28 and then I'm going to hop right on over to page 32. Oh, this is such good stuff. This is just such great spiritual stuff, right? Not a ministerial term. Alrighty, so settle in and uh, take in um, this wisdom from Mother Myrtle. On page 28 at the bottom, a period of quiet and rest each day is your opportunity to establish yourself at the center of your being, the one place where the supply of life and substance is inexhaustible. God is in this eternal life that we make into living. Each day you should have a period of stillness when the soul may gather sustaining power and restoring life. And now I'm going to move over to page 32. Page 32, about the middle of the page there. Now, uh, this is a longer piece, so again, I just ask you to uh, join with me here. Mm, here we go. This is a favorite. This is a Myrtle favorite. Be still, be still, be still. God in the midst of you is substance. God in the midst of you is love. God in the midst of you is wisdom. Let not your thoughts be given to lack, but let wisdom fill them with substance and faith of God. Let not your heart be a center of resentment and fear and doubt. Be still and know that at this time, it is the altar of God, of love. Love so sure and unfailing, love so irresistible and magnetic that it draws your supply to you from the great storehouse of the universe. Trust God. Use God's wisdom. Prove and express God's love. As you come out of the silence, Count your blessings and give thanks for them. Realize that only good exists in you and in your world. That the power you contacted in the silence may have opportunity to multiply and increase your blessings. Give thanks that you have already received the good for which you looked to God in the silence, feeling the assurance and she quotes scripture here from Isaiah chapter 65, verse 24. Before they call, I will answer. While they are speaking, I will hear. Now moving to the top of page, page 33. On the mountaintop, we receive new illumination, inspiration, and insight into the providing law. Then we have, a, have work to do away from the mountain, away from the mountaintop, lifting our thoughts to the truth, capital T, truth standard. We should carry the light, joy, peace, and strength we receive on the spiritual heights of consciousness into our everyday life for the purpose of redeeming the human part of us. Jesus had his times on the mountaintop, but afterward, he descended to minister to the needy ones. 
she goes on to write, the thing to bear in mind is to take with you and hold on to all that you gain on the mountaintop of prayer and not let go of it when you meet the thoughts and states of mind on the material plane that need to be spiritualized. In other words, maintain your spiritual poise and control when you meet adverse thoughts. Otherwise, you cannot redeem the adversary. Interestingly, she capitalizes the A in adversary there. When we seek God, our temporal as well as spiritual needs are supplied. The providing law will always work for us when we work with it. It works if we work it, right? And then she quotes scripture from Proverbs chapter 24, four, verses 3 and 4. By wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Wow. So I'm going to just pop back through these excerpts and just give a, a few highlights here. She tells us right out of the gate here that a period of silence and rest each day is your opportunity to understand that source is inexhaustible. And we must carve out this time to, to tune out the noise of the day and to tune in to God, to tune into the silence, which is why she goes on to say on page 32, be still, be still, be still. God in the midst of you is substance. You know, God is law. The same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We grow in change in our understanding of the God of our being. But God, the principle, the law, never changes. And one of the ways that we come into this deeper understanding and we have our own spiritual uh, maturity, or she says the spiritual poise, isn't that just so beautiful, is that we come into the silence and we allow ourselves to just simply be. And then she gives us this wonderful instruction that when we come out of the silence to count our blessings. Now, personally, I like to count them going in. I like to count them in the middle and I like to count them <laughs> in the end because an attitude of gratitude really is just everything, right? You know, in the midst of any any kind of conflict or or challenge there is good in it for us if we will simply have eyes to see and ears to hear now this business that she talks about on the mountaintop now this is really important because so often uh, you know in unity we just want to stay in the silence right and she talks about this uh, in this chapter that you know you don't want to build a condo there I know it's a comfortable warm you know fuzzy place to be but the point is to go there to experience it to experience a deeper connection with God to tune into that deeper channel of God and then to come out and you know as Jesus did to descend to minister you know you don't have to be an ordained minister your life is your ministry your life is your ministry and how you show up and so the point is not to live on the mountaintop. <laughs> the point is to, to go within, to go there, and then to, to come out and take with you uh, what you need to uh, traverse these times, uh, which she says is how we control, uh, you know, when we, when we meet these adverse thoughts, the adversary. Hmm. Okay, so in gratitude, we just say thank you. Thank you, Myrtle. Wow. As relevant today as ever. Yes? Yeah. All righty, so uh, we've had a little Myrtle, and now it's time for a little prayer. Oopsie. Um, and so I'm going to invite you now 
to prepare to come into our uh, time of prayer and meditation together. And, you know, what I want to remind you of is that, you know, so we've heard some Myrtle. This is, you know, spiritual theory, let's say. And now it's time to take that into practice. It's called a practice for a reason, um, you know, because we discipline ourselves to carve out this time. So thank you for uh, carving out this time for yourself today, whether you're here now live stream or you're seeing this later, either on Facebook or maybe on our YouTube channel. Thank you for taking this time. So the way this starts to work is that you, you begin to practice and you know, you may start to notice some shifts and some changes that are incremental at first, but then they begin to grow. And that begins to take on some momentum in your life, in your being, and how you show up. Uh, and before you know it, you're being pulled by this practice, then you're being pulled by uh, this spiritual vision. So, let us continue then to give ourselves permission to be here right now. Regardless of what has come before, uh, uh, before on this day, you could have been at work or you might have been out running errands, um, who knows, but you are here now. So let us tune in together. We're going to scan the body temple. Uh, this is a prayer and meditation that, uh, that is focused on that. And we're gonna go from the top of our head to the tips of our toes. So let us turn within. I invite you to close your outer eyes, but to open your inner eye, that beautiful window to your soul. And so just take a couple of easy breaths, just breathing in and breathing out. Nothing labored, just with ease and with grace, just breathing in and out ever so gently, just being easy with your body, easy with your body temple. And so now just come into the awareness of your body, knowing that we are going to scan the body from the top of your head, from the crown chakra to the tips of your toes. And so from this point forward, I invite you to allow my words to be your words. I want you to experience this from the I am not from you are. Uh, I want you to experience this from I am. So I invite you to allow my words to be your words. And so I begin with my thoughts, my words, my actions, my deeds, and I affirm right here, right now, that they are all coming into alignment with my true nature, my love, nature, my, my God nature. And so I bless my body right here, right now. I love my body and my body loves me. And I bless my body. I bless my mind. I bless my, my brain. I bless my skull, my scalp my hair, I bless my skin, this beautiful skin suit that I walk around in. I bless my bone structure that gives me, that gives me stability. I bless my eyes, my nose, my ears, what I hear my throat, my voice, how I use my voice, my lips, my tongue. I speak words of life. I speak words of life. My gums, my teeth, my nasal cavity, my, my entire face. 
And so now working down, I begin to really soften my shoulders and my neck. I bless my heart space, my entire cardiovascular system and the beauty and the magnificence and how it works together. And so I just, in a moment of gratitude, say thank you, thank you, thank you for the harmony and the beauty in the way in which my heart functions. I am so grateful. I'm grateful for my lungs, for my chest, for my arms, my fingers, my toes. I'm grateful for all of my internal functions. Again, just the magnificent way in which my body works. The harmony, the beauty, the choreography, the symphony, the beautiful music that my body makes just in the, in the simplicity yet the magnificence in the way that it works together. The way that it heals, the healing power, the natural healing power that my body has. And so right here, right now, I give my body permission to heal. I don't need anybody's permission. I give my body, I give from the power of God in me, as me, through me, I give my body permission to heal. And so I am grateful for my kidneys, for my liver. I'm grateful for my colon, my back, my spine, my entire pelvic region, my hips. Again, the beauty in the way in which this particular area of my body functions. I bless my, my legs, my, my thighs, my, my knees. I bless my knees. Thank you, God, for my knees and the way that they move. I bless my calves, my ankles, my feet, and my toes. And so again, I just, I scan my body temple. And I just allow it to glow and radiate. And I have such appreciation, especially for those areas that do that so easily right now, today, in this moment. And with that God energy, I also now pay attention to the messages that my body is sending me about an area that that wants my attention you know it could be it could be about flexibility it could be about rest or sleep it could be about diet um, you know so I just allow myself to tune into whatever messages my body is wanting me to hear I use my ears to tune in and listen. I listen to those whispers from my body before they become a cosmic two by four. And even the ones that have. And so now I allow that God energy to just permeate those areas or area that's asking for my attention. And I allow any areas that, that are just letting me know that there's some level of discord. I allow that wash of harmony to take over, to fill in, to just be at ease in those areas. And again, I give my body permission to heal in whatever way is right and perfect for my soul. I don't have to know what that looks like. I just allow. And from this sacred space, I take this now into the silence for just a few moments. 
deepening my experience with God right here in the quietude for just a few moments in the silence. And so we know that love truly binds together the entire human family. We know that love is the great miracle cure in how we love ourselves so that we can share that with others. And so we hold this picture of health and, and well-being not only for ourselves, but for the entire planet, not just for ourselves, but for all others. And so for deep gratitude for the time that we have spent together here, putting a murder on it, we just simply say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Let's just take a couple of breaths, just easy breaths, just in and out, just being ever so gentle, gentle with yourself, just easy breaths. And that is how you put a myrtle on it. <laughs> Say that with me. That is how I put a myrtle on it. Let's say that together. That is how I put a myrtle on it. <laughs> okay, uh, we've had a little myrtle, we've had a little prayer, and now we're gonna have a little song. Now the words are very, very simple. From the top of my head to the tips of my toes, I am healthy and whole in mind, body, and soul. We're going to sing it three times. From the top of my head to the tips of my toes, I'm healthy and whole in mind, body, and soul. From the top of my head to the tips of my toes, I'm healthy and whole in mind, body, and soul. From the top of my head to the tips of my toes, I'm healthy and whole in mind, body, and soul. From the top of my head to the tips of my toes, I'm healthy and whole in mind, body, and soul. From the top of my head to the tips of my toes, I'm healthy and whole in mind, body, and soul. From the top of my head to the tips of my toes, I'm healthy and whole in mind, body, and soul. Mind, body, and soul. Mind, body, and soul. Yay! Give yourselves a hand there. Alrighty. Ah, thank you for joining in today. Again, whether you're here with us live stream or 
You might be looking at this episode later, whether it's on our Facebook page or our Unity of Arlington um, YouTube channel. Uh, thank you for being here for Put a Myrtle on It, the place to be for a little myrtle, a little prayer, and a little song. I do want to invite you to also join our wonderful Unity of Arlington spiritual community. We are a wonderful, loving tribe. Uh, so I invite you to join us on Sundays, 11 a.m. Central, uh, right here on uh, Facebook Live for our Sunday service. Now this Sunday, I will be doing part two of a two-part series uh, based on affirmative prayer, the power of affirmative prayer, part two. Alrighty. I love you. I really do. I love you. So, until next time, peace and blessings. Thanks for being here. Have a great, great, great weekend.